The lamb's high banquet we await in snow-white robes of royal state. And now the Red Sea's channel passed to Christ our Prince we sing at last. Upon the altar of the cross his body All to thee we pray, fulfill in us thy joy today. When death says, grant, Lord, that we may share thy Paschal victory. To thee who dead again does live, O glory, Lord, thy people give. O glory to the Father be, and Spirit bless. The loving kindness of the Lord filleth the whole world. Alleluia. By the word of God the heavens were established. Alleluia. Alleluia. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous. For it becometh well the just to be thankful. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Glory be to God on high, and in at peace good will towards man. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Son of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, 
receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art the Most High in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has given thine only Son to be unto us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life, give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive that his inestimable benefit and also endeavour ourselves to follow the blessed steps of the most holy life through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The epistle is written in the second chapter of the first letter of St. Peter, beginning at the 19th verse. This is thankworthy, if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongly. For what glory is it if, when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? But if, when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously, who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and I am known of mine. Alleluia. The Good Shepherd hath risen, who hath given his life for his sheep. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel is written in the 10th chapter of that according to St. John, beginning at the 11th verse. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. The other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be, be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Jesus as the Good Shepherd is one of the most familiar images in the Christian repertoire. It's familiar enough in art, in stained glass, in painting, very often in a somewhat sentimentalized version, a version that's familiar in Sunday school, whereas every Anglican incumbent and Sunday school teacher knows the easiest thing in the world is to make sheep out of cotton wool to keep people quiet. But in fact, it's not only a central image and an ancient image, it's one which, as Jesus himself uses it, is deeply rooted in life the shepherd of the people. And indeed, so is God, here, O thou shepherd of Israel, says the 80th Psalm, appealing to God precisely as the one who shepherds people like a flock of sheep. So when Jesus here in St. John's Gospel is presented to us as speaking of himself as the good shepherd, it's not just a little bit of bucolic rural imagery with cuddly lambs. It's about the role of Jesus as the one who sustains But that being said, when we've recognized that the image is actually a bigger, tougher, richer one than we might imagine, there's a dimension of Jesus' own use of it here in this gospel, which takes us further still. And that's the emphasis here on mutual knowledge. The good shepherd knows the sheep and is known by them. The good shepherd recognizes the sheep and is recognized by them. They know his voice. And it seems that in Jesus' own usage and recreation of this image here in the passage we heard in this morning's gospel, something very basic is being said about the royal leadership of God among his people. It's based on recognition, on solidarity, we might say. We can't begin to understand the work that God does in Jesus Christ without that basic recognition that God comes to be identified with us in the life and death of Jesus. This is not a leadership exercised from afar. It's not, it's not simply a job done by somebody who's paid to do it, the hireling of the gospel story. Jesus as shepherd is the one who identifies himself with the flock, who makes himself recognizable to them so that they can hear him. And that means, say, that for God in Christ, there is no interest, no agenda, no program, no cause that is different between God and humanity. God has no cause but us. That is God's purpose in Christ is the purpose of our well-being. And to understand the depth and significance of the saving work of Jesus is to understand that it goes that deep. It goes into the very center of our well-being, our life, our survival, our flourishing. God has no cause but ours. And if we want to defend the cause of God in our world, it is always going to be inseparable from the interest of actual flesh and blood human beings. We can't say that God's interest, God's dignity, God's honor is served by anything that degrades or marginalizes human beings. We can't say that there are categories of human beings in whose cause God is not interested. God has identified with our agenda. Not, of course, the agenda we'd sometimes like to put. The agenda of our wants and comfort. But the agenda, the interest of our real flourishing, our becoming truly human. God's cause is ours. There is no gap between them. So the idea that we are 
encountering a God who has there are those who are recognized by me. Other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And that's a very remarkable affirmation that even those outside the historic boundaries of God's people will recognize the God who speaks to them in Jesus, and that they are recognized by him as belonging with him, as having the same cause, the same interest, the same agenda. So there are two things that come out of this, which we want to reflect on it. It's simply the works, not distance, not as something alien imposed on us, not as God forcing through his will and his purpose at the expense of ours, but God who made us for his joy and delight, God recognizing our interests as his, making himself recognizable, God standing with us and saying, I want nothing but your well-being, your life, your healing. That's all I want. I have no hidden agenda. I have no small print in this agreement. Here I am, says God in Christ. Here I am for you, for all of you. So all that we say about the sovereign will of God, the kingly rule of God, is shot through with that recognition that the soul is our exercised for our liberation. And the second thing that comes out of it is, of course, something that should make us all scratch our heads a bit and think about our priorities. God is free to recognize those we don't. And our task, growing as Christians, growing morally and spiritually in the body of Christ, our task is not just to cement the solidarity of the Christian community, but to seek solidarity with all of God's children wherever they are, to recognize that their cause is ours, that anyone suffering, anyone deprived across the world is indeed our business. We can recognize who they are. We can recognize that we belong to the same human world with the same agenda. And that means, of course, that we're never going to be absolutely 100% sure where the boundaries are of God's people. God himself seems gloriously, sovereignly uninterested in where the boundaries are. But those who can hear his voice will respond. That in itself suggests one further thought on this also. Those who may not recognize in the church and the historic and traditional language of the church, something that they can see as life-giving, may yet be recognizing very deeply the speech of God in Christ to them. People who for all sorts of reasons have been put off by the church and there's reason enough for that, will still strangely and rather wonderfully be responsive to what God is saying in Jesus Christ. And our task as church is sometimes at least, perhaps often, not so much to insist that they immediately start talking the way we do, but to try and leave space for them to hear what God is saying rather than us. To leave the silence that's provided by our tradition and our liturgy, the silence provided by not just the words, so that others may hear within that silence and that space, the God who recognizes them and whom they are able to recognize. It's not just an academic point at the moment, of course. We read in the newspapers about the kind of calculations that people are having to make here and elsewhere, balancing out the needs of an economy which needs to be restarted, and human beings who need their health and their lives protected. There are places where, contexts where it seems people are willing to say, well, of course, we have to make sacrifices. Usually, unfortunately, meaning the sacrifice of other people. 
and there was a rather terrifying photograph circulating on the internet last week showing some of those in the United States who were demonstrating to persuade the United States government to lift the lockdown. And the banner held up by one of these protesters simply said, sacrifice the weak. I hope it doesn't take too much imagination to see how completely that cuts against everything that God says to us and does for us and with us in the Easter events. That phrase is something completely antithetical to the life and purpose of the God whose cause is our cause, and that means everyone's cause, the weak and the strong, the rich and the poor together. And in our thinking about how we as Christians carry ourselves through this time of crisis, one of the most important things we can nail down as central to our vision and our witness is that conviction that we must never stop recognizing the human reality and seriousness and solidity of any and every other human being. There's nobody there who is surplus to requirements, nobody who can be sacrificed without cost in order to keep the rest of us prosperous. The decisions that our government and other governments face and will face even more acutely in the weeks ahead are real ones and they're tough ones. But we ought not to pretend that there is some shortcut which can be arrived at by identifying the people who are dispensable, the people we don't need to recognize. And this morning, as we give thanks for the good shepherding of God in Christ, for the sovereign protective rule of a God who is always with us and for us. We can recognize yet again that the mystery and the glory of the re revelation given us in Jesus Christ is of a God who works, rules, and transforms through identifying with us, who addresses us and works with us by making himself recognizable, and who himself treats all human beings as recognizable to him, whether we recognize them, or remember them, or pay attention to them, or not. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for his sheep, because his life itself is bound up with their well-being. He his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, says St. Peter in this morning's epistle. And however exactly we make theological sense of that great and mysterious affirmation, we can see there again the same pattern. The God who in Christ has made our cause, our agenda, his own. The God who has decided to be identified with us. The God, you might most boldly say, who has decided not to be without us, not to live without us his life and ours, bound together. And as we root ourselves afresh in that life bound up with ours, in the Holy Eucharist, in our prayer, in the renewal of our baptismal commitments, we are renewed also in that capacity to recognize the God who is with us and for us, and to recognize all those he recognizes, all those he speaks to to be with them, to listen to them, to speak with them, so that together there may be one fold, one shepherd, one reconciled, healed human community. Amen. We affirm our faith in the words of the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being in one substance of the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, 
and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost as a Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us pray for the whole. Lord, we continue to pray for your church, guarded and shepherded continually by your Son, as it negotiates its mission and ministry at this time. We pray for patience in our common discovery of what it is to be a church, for our endurance of doubt and difference. And we ask you to inspire our mission to those we perceive as outside its fold, to trust that they are whom you came to be with, and to whom we, joining in your godly life, must come. We rejoice in all that is being done to extend the church's presence into communities in need and deprivation at this time. We pray for the nations of the world and for your earth as we continue to negotiate conditions of lockdown and recovery. We pray for the just distribution of resources and our collaboration in sharing them. We pray that our concern may extend to those whose lives are otherwise defined by isolation, by sacrifice, by the refusal of common abundance. Thinking particularly of those in prison, in or seeking asylum, or of no fixed abode. We pray for all those whose employment is precarious, who are being pressured to consider a change of their circumstances, who feel like hirelings at this time, that their needs and their dignity may be recognised. We pray for those suffering from the coronavirus, the diseases that attend to it, that all of these may find comfort and healing, and that they may know they are surrounded by an earthly and heavenly community working for their restoration. We remember particularly Vanda Elvey, Lynette Levitt, Ryan Watkins and Woody Kahn. And then we pray for those who have died in the past week, for all those who have been unable to mourn or be interred in the company in, they, in, which, in, they, in which they wish. That they may know their assured eternal presence in the company of he who laid down his life for them. Grant this, O oh Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee, and lift up my hands in thy name. Alleluia. Jesus lives, thy arrows now can hold death no more of all us. Jesus lives, by this we know, thou O grave canst not enthrall us. Alleluia. Jesus lives, henceforth is death, but the gate of life immortal. This shall come a trembling breath, when we pass its gloomy portal. Alleluia. Jesus lives, for us he died, then alone to Jesus living. Pure in heart we may abide, glory to our Saviour giving. Alleluia. Jesus 
Jesus lives, but no well, not from us his love shall sever. Life nor death, no powers of hell, bear us from his keeping ever. Alleluia. Jesus lives to him the throne, over all the world is given. May we go where he is gone, rest and reign with him in heaven. Alleluia. Pray that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive this sacrifice at thy hands, to the praise and glory of his name, <clears throat> to our benefit and that of all his holy church. You truly know this, you repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following his commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, a heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that heart of repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, and only Son, our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing. Holy. Holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there what by his one oblation himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And in institute, and in her gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant by the power of thy Holy Spirit, we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to thee, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy humble servants, having in remembrance the precious death and passion of thy dear Son, his mighty resurrection and his glorious ascension, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving in Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences, and to grant that all we who are partakers of this Holy Communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. As our Saviour Christ commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And thy spirit. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share the bread. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Behold of God, Behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for us, preserve our body and souls unto everlasting life. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for us, preserve our bodies and souls unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for thee, preserve thy body and soul 
unto everlasting life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Almighty God, we heartily thank thee that thou our faith to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food and most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and to assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporated in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost feel honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. The peace of God which passes our understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. O Queen of Heaven, rejoice. Alleluia. The one whom you have merited to bear. Alleluia, has arisen as he foretold. Alleluia, pray for us now before God. Alleluia.